How diapers are made in factories. An absorbent pad is positioned between two non-woven fabric sheets to form a disposable diaper. The non-woven fabric of the diaper provides it with a comfortable shape and aids in preventing leaks. The pad is specifically made to absorb and hold bodily fluids. The absorbent pad is vacuum formed before being joined to an impermeable bottom sheet and a permeable top sheet in a multi-step process that creates these diapers. The components are sealed together using ultrasonic vibrations or heat. The diaper's edges are gathered into the right shape by elastic fibers that are sewn to the sheets, ensuring a snug fit around the baby's legs and crotch. Body fluids that seep through the permeable top sheet and are absorbed into the pad will be retained by the disposable diaper when it is fitted correctly. Basic Ingredients Pad that absorbs The capacity of a diaper cloth or disposable to absorb and hold onto moisture is by far its most crucial feature. While the cotton used to make cloth diapers is fairly absorbent, the capacity of synthetic polymers is significantly higher than that of natural fibers. The most advanced disposable diaper available today can hold 15 times its weight in water. The absorbent pad in the diaper's core is responsible for its extraordinary absorption power. The two main components of this pad are a fibrous substance like wood pulp and a hydrophilic polymer, which loves water. Fine particles of acrylic acid derivative, such as potassium, sodium, or alkyl acrylate, make up the polymer. These polymeric particles behave like microscopic sponges, holding onto water several times their weight. These polymer molecules appear as lengthy ropes or chains under the microscope. These chemical ropes have certain parts that are intended to interact with molecules of water. Cross-linking is the capacity of certain polymer segments to form chemical bonds with other polymer molecules. These polymeric chains can absorb enormous volumes of water when they are cross-linked in high enough quantities to create a gel network that is not soluble in water. This class of polymers is known as hydrojoules, superabsorbents, or hydrocolloids. The strength of the gel network can be adjusted based on the extent of cross-connecting. This is a crucial characteristic since gel strength and the polymer's propensity to flow or to form under stress are linked, non-woven fabric. At the center of the diaper is the absorbent pad, which is secured in place by sheets of non-woven fabric that make up the diaper's body. Because of how they are created, non-woven fabrics differ from regular fabrics. The process of creating an interlocking network of fiber loops involves weaving together fibers such as silk, cotton, polyester, wool, etc. to make traditional fabrics. Non-wovens are usually constructed by mechanically, chemically, or thermally interlocking the plastic fibers. These resins can be nylon, polyester, polyethylene, or polypropylene. The wet laid procedure and the dry laid process are the two main ways non-wovens are put together. Non-woven diaper materials are usually made via a dry lay method, like the meltdown approach. Using this technique, melted plastic resin is driven through minuscule holes by air pressure. Other components. Other auxiliary materials include elastic threads, hot melt adhesives, tape strips, or other closures in printing inks for embellishments. The absorbent pads formation during the manufacturing process. A conveyor belt that can be moved is used to create the absorbent pad as it goes through a lengthy forming chamber. Pressurized nozzles are positioned throughout the chamber to spray fibrous material or polymer particles onto the conveyor surface. A vacuum is applied from below while the pad material is sprayed onto the belt through a perforation in the conveyor's bottom causing the fibers to be drawn down and forming a flat pad. The absorbent polymers have been added to the pad using a minimum of two different techniques. One method involves injecting the polymer into the same feedstock that provides the fibers. This process yields a pad with uniformly distributed absorbent polymer over its length, width, and thickness. The method's drawbacks include the possibility of absorbent loss as a result of the small particles being drawn through the conveyor's holes by the vacuum. That makes it costly and untidy because only one side of the pad loses absorbency while the other side does not, this procedure also results in unequal pad absorption. Attaching the absorbent material to the pad's upper surface after it has been produced is a second way of attaching fiber and polymer. This process results in a pad with little absorbency throughout and a concentration of absorbent material on the top surface. An additional drawback of such a pad construction is that some of the polymer put on its surface may be lost. Furthermore, because all of the absorbent is on the exterior of the pad, this method frequently results in gel blocking. This outer layer traps the moisture, preventing it from diffusing to the center. Because of this obstruction, the wearer may experience discomfort when moisture is held on their skin. Controlling the polymer and fiber material blends solves these issues. To apply multiple layers of fiber and polymer, multiple spray dispensers are utilized. A part of the polymer is added to the mixture to generate a layer of mixed polymer and fiber as the fiber is dragged into the chamber and the bottom of the pad forms. To create the appearance of a sandwich, more pure fiber is then pulled on top. 
With the absorbent polymer restricted to its core and encircled by fibrous material, this arrangement forms a pad. The polymer is concentrated at the pad's core, therefore gel blockage is not an issue. Since fibrous material envelops the entire absorbent, it also resolves the issue of particle loss. Finally, because the polymer is distributed precisely where it is needed, this procedure is more economical. The pad travels down the conveyor path to a leveling roller close to the forming chamber outlet once it has absorbed its whole dosage of fiber and polymer. To give the pad a consistent thickness, this roller eliminates some of the fiber at the top. The pad then passes through the outlet and onto the conveyor for the next steps that make the finished diaper. Getting the non-woven ready Using the previously mentioned melt blonde technique, a plastic resin is produced into sheets of non-woven fabric. The web or broad roll from which these sheets are made is then sliced to the proper width for use in diapers. For the top sheet and the bottom sheet, there are separate webs. It should be mentioned that because the non-woven fabrics are frequently manufactured in different locations, this phase does not always happen in the order listed above after pad construction. Large bolts of fabric are connected to special roller equipment that feeds fabric to the assembly line when the producer is ready to start producing diapers. Stretched elastic bands are eventually glued to the backing sheet at this stage of the procedure. These elastic bands tighten and collect the diaper together once it is put together to guarantee a tight fit and prevent leaks. Putting the components together The absorbent pad, the top sheet, and the backing sheet are still three distinct parts at this stage of the procedure. These three parts need to be cut into diaper-sized pieces and sewn together because they are in lengthy strips. The polyethylene bottom sheet and absorbent pad are fed onto a conveyor to achieve this. After feeding the top sheet of polypropylene into position, the assembled sheets are fused using ultrasonic welding, heat, or glue. Other attachments including velcregium, tem, closures, or tape strips may be attached to the constructed diaper. After that, the lengthy roll is divided into individual diapers, folded, and shipped. Waste slash byproducts. In actuality, the diaper sector uses the wastes of other industries, hence there are no notable byproducts produced during the diaper production process. Many times, the absorbent polymers used in diaper manufacture are byproducts of other chemical industries' production lines. Although the polymer particles are too small for other uses, they work great in diapers. However, significant volumes of non-woven material and polymer particles are wasted throughout the diaper-making process. The diaper industry strives to maximize the amount of diapers produced per square yard meter of material to reduce waste. Additionally, every effort is made to recover the extra polymer and fiber that was utilized in the forming chamber. However, because of filter clogging and other losses, this isn't always feasible. Quality Assurance Disposable diaper quality is regulated in several ways, most of which are related to the absorbency of the product. Making sure the absorbent pad's polymer to fiber ratio is accurate is crucial. The capacity of the diaper to absorb moisture will be impacted by too much fluctuation. Industry trial and error has demonstrated that the fiber to particle ratio should be between 75-25 and 90-10 for best cost and performance. So this is the end of our today's video, do you like it? Kindly give your valuable response in our comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more interesting and informative videos.